Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're going to be taking a look at the top three things I dislike about the Sniper EFI system, how you can solve those on your own project, and one bonus item that's just really good to know about how the system works. For those of you who have been following my channel, you know that I've been testing the Sniper EFI system on the 67 Mustang for quite a while now. Now, in my first video about the system, I highly recommended it and mostly listed the high points. And that still stands. I still recommend the system, but now I've developed a list of things that I do not like, and we're going to go through three of them that are probably the most beneficial to somebody starting out installing the system from scratch, and one bonus item that's just really strange. To start with, let's go with the bonus item, which is how constant battery voltage affects the system. Now, when I saw the system the first time and saw the constant battery wire going through the relay, I assumed the ignition wire simply turned on the relay to allow power through, and that when you turned the ignition off, it cut all power to the system. But once I traced all those wires and cut that out of there during my installation of the PMU-16, that turned out not to be the case. So if the PMU-16 takes power away from the unit at the same time the ignition is turned off, so that everything is switched to the sniper, the system works exactly as it did before, except any changes you make through the handheld are not committed to long-term memory. It needs constant battery power after the ignition is cut in order to commit changes, and I don't understand why. This must be a deliberate design choice on the system itself, but I can't understand why you would do that and not just save changes as people made them. Now, if you run into a problem where you're not seeing your changes on your handheld committed to the system, this would be a good spot to start because it is absolutely always the case. I even debated just adding a toggle switch to my constant power because it would allow me to lock other people out of making changes for my handheld and messing with my tuning. Now, the three items that I really just don't like about the system and how you can deal with them are the IACV system, that's the idle air control system for controlling the idle by bypassing your throttle plates, the way the handheld generates fuel maps, and the way the handheld generates timing curves. So to start with, let's talk about the IACV. Now the IACV is essentially the same system you would have seen in an early 90s, late 80s pickup with throttle body injection. The problem in this application is, if it needs to adjust too much due to a rapid change, it seems to lose its mind, spike to an unreasonable level, and will not come back until you turn the car off and turn it back on. Now, you can cause this to happen by changing the throttle blade position. So if you're tuning your car, you may actually have to turn the car off between sessions to find out what the real IACV setting is. That's really annoying. The issue in particular that made me hate the system was one where when I would start driving, the system would actually start to go wide open, mechanically leaking as much air as possible past the throttle blades, but on the computer read as 0%. So there was no way to make me close it more, but when I would come to a stop sign, it would be idling at like 1300 RPM, which was ridiculous for this torque converter. I don't know exactly which item fixed it. It was either due to dirty voltage because of a questionable battery or a questionable connection, or it was due to something in my physical mechanical tuning. But when I tuned it for the 50th time after installing the PMU-16, I was able to solve the issue and I don't know which one it was for sure. But it just hold out hope that it is solvable. Now for the other two items, let's jump over to my desktop and look at what the handheld generates in the software for the Sniper EFI. Here we are in the Holly Sniper EFI. This is the basic software available from the Holly website and is recommended to be downloaded in the instructions for the system, but it's not clearly explained where it fits into the configuration process. So I'm going to describe how it applies to the last two items on my list, the base fuel maps and the ignition curve. To start with the base fuel maps, I've downloaded a standard made from the handheld configuration file from the Mustang. Now this, in the fuel section, gives us the base fuel map. And this is the thing that the handheld is using when you provide all of the basics of your engine to make assumptions on. Now it's guessing as close as it can, but your learn table is going to be changing this to be correct for your particular engine. On the learn table here, you can see what it learned on a quick drive down the road, where it filled in a bunch of these values with adjustments, and some of them are pretty big adjustments negative 20 down here and 16.2 up here, 
those are corrections to the base map. Now, these are pretty radical because I didn't drive the car very much to give it much time to learn. So the more you drive the car, the more accurate your learn table will be. Once you have the learn table established, however, you'll want to go ahead and commit this to the base fuel map. What that will allow you to do is it will allow you to commit the change and make your learn table be a much smaller adjustment that lets you know how well your base table now matches the actual running environment of the engine. If you commit these, I'll transfer these to the base, you'll see the changes in your base table and that should now reflect exactly what your engine wants. The next time you go driving, the learn table will begin relearning and have very small values if you were very close or very big values if your system is still having difficulty learning what the engine needs. Now doing this will let you really refine how well the engine runs and at what RPM and map pressure sensor reading and all of that. But if you make changes from the handheld after this point, you will end up breaking these maps it will overwrite them. So you have to limit what changes you then do from the handheld as you move forward. Now, done with the fuel section, we can talk about the spark. So on my car in particular, I'm using the HyperSpark Ignition. The base timing is 14 and the, the total advancement is 34 for this particular engine. The problem is when you tell the Sniper EFI that, this is the chart that gets built. That is what the chart looks like visually. That is not good. That is basically a cliff of timing. And while the car will run, it won't run the best with this particular timing table. It's basically as if the vacuum advance only works for a few hundred RPMs at a time. And in order to fix this, there's a super easy tool in here that you don't have available to you in the base handheld, and that is smooth. You can come in here and just smooth the table and let it start adjusting it. I did a smooth all, a smooth all, and it's trying to average basically between the lowest and the highest, and now it's a lot more of a granular curve than it is a vertical cliff. This is a big feature that I think should just be in the handheld or the handheld should just make this assumption to make everything run a little better and make it a little less of a radical shift as you're driving up through the RPMs. But if you don't do this, you'll never be able to get your engine running perfectly smoothly and your fuel maps will always look a little weird because of this radical cliff in timing that'll be happening on your system. So those are the top three things I dislike about the Sniper EFI and how I address them. The bonus item may only apply to 1% of you out there, but for that 1%, it will save your sanity. That was a bizarre problem to have. Now, I haven't been making videos as often as I had been because of the state being on fire and COVID trying to wipe everything out. But now that things are calming down and we might be on the cusp of escaping 2020, I should be able to get back to making videos more frequently. So keep your eye out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.